Hey guys, Fix It John here. Uh, we're gonna, we're remodeling this whole house. So I thought I'd show you this. I've already remodeled one restroom. I didn't show you that. Uh, but I, I don't know how I'm gonna break this up, either uh, room by room or the whole house. But uh, I think I'll break it up room by room and show you uh, what we're gonna do today. I'm gonna rip out all this tile, take this bathtub out. It's old, it's 1980 model. Uh, and the uh, ceiling here, where it comes down from the main ceiling. I'm gonna rip that out because I've got two sons that are uh, six five and six six and <laughs> they're, they're too tall for this. So uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm uh, eventually I'm gonna raise this up higher, probably about to here so they can, probably about this height, uh, just to where you can reach the, uh, where the short guy like me can reach a nozzle. And uh, I'm not gonna do this today, but this cabinet's coming out and the tile. I'm not doing all the tile. I'll do the edge of the tile. But the other thing I want to do is uh, throw a fan in this window so it'll suck all the air, all the uh, dust and debris out. But uh, yeah, that's what it's going to be. Uh, there's short fat guy right there is going to do all the work. All right, guys. I'm gonna set you up here and uh, put some work clothes on. All right, guys, back in the restroom, bathroom rather. This is my safety equipment. I have some uh, headphones. I'm gonna wear a mask because so it's, it's gonna get dusty in here. Safety glasses and uh, some sissy gloves. And what I'm gonna be doing, I'm gonna use this uh, pneumatic hammer or the shovel to take that tile off on the uh, in the shower stall. I don't know which one's gonna be easier, but we're gonna find out together. I'm also gonna chip away uh, this square block right here, that whole square block, because uh, we're having a pro lay the tile and probably take it up. I may, I may take it up, but, uh, and we don't want it too close to the new uh, bathtub. So I'm gonna take a half that tile away and uh, we're gonna finish this area first before we uh, uh, tackle this. We're doing it piecemeal so you know we can still live here and get things done. Uh, while I'm at it today, I may take that tile rung out, this whole tile here, take it out all the way down so I don't have to come back and do it because we're gonna come back and put a whole new uh, cabinet. All right guys, first thing you wanna do before you start busting tile out is take a, take these faucets off. I didn't put it on, but uh, hopefully uh, this takes a uh, little Allen wrench here at the top while it's at the bottom. Loosen, oh yeah. If you're not gonna use this tub, which we're, not, we're gonna replace the tub, you may be reusing it. Uh, before you uh, start busting the tile, you want to fill this uh, tub full of cardboard and maybe throw a uh, drop cloth down it. All right, guys, fix it, John. I have all my PPE on. Probably, uh, but the most important thing you're gonna need for this job is a nice, a nice hot cup of Starbucks. Oh man, I couldn't do the job without it. So, let's get after it. I'm gonna try my uh, pneumatic camera first and if that doesn't work, I'll go after it with my shovel. All 
All right, guys, what I'm doing, I came up with a plan. I'm going to run my uh, air hammer down here, my pneumatic air hammer, cut a line, and just rip, rip the uh, pile right out. That way I don't bust it out this way. So let's get after it. Hey guys, Fix It John here. Uh, I was going to unscrew this. Typically there's uh, little rods that run back and forth here and here and here and here. And there's a tool you can buy, it just puts down there and you turn it. So we don't have that. I'm gonna have to hit this with a hammer and a screwdriver. But uh, I'm gonna take a screwdriver like this and uh, tap on the end of it and see if I can loosen this sucker up all right guys uh it didn't take much I'm just peck at it until we can get it off all right guys fix it john here uh i want to use my pneumatic hammer and try to knock this uh tile right here out of the way so i can get that tub out guys literally i think the tub is going to be the hardest thing to get out of here because it's cast iron and it is heavy 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 hey guys fix it john here before we change this uh, cartridge valve the very first thing that you want to do is have a nice hot cup of starbucks Uh, I'm gonna show you what I got done so far in the restroom. Got that out. I don't know if I showed you all. I got the new uh, valve in. Showed you that. Uh, this is what I'm working on now. Uh, I'm gonna build a uh, soffit here uh, where you see this plastic. It's covering up the uh, uh, attic. So uh, it's been like that for a couple days. I had to get a few things, but. Uh, what I'm working on now is uh, this electrical here. And this is a 10 gauge wire. And I'm gonna bring the soffit uh, probably about uh, three inches down. Cause as you know, I have two tall sons, 6'5 and 6'6 six, six, and still growing. But what I gotta do is uh, pull this plastic out, get up there, cut that wire. I've already shut the power off and checked it. I also verified it with my multimeter. I mean, you can use this thing, but uh, if it would go solid red, it'd be on, but uh, use a uh, multimeter to, to uh, be absolutely sure. Here's 110 here. That's still on. Okay, so, uh, I got some cable here. Uh, this stuff's orange and not white, but uh, it's the same as the white stuff. It's 30 amp. This house was built in 86, so they changed the uh, color of the uh, cable, Romex uh, NM cable. Uh, they changed the color back in 01, so uh, you could identify it. Uh, so like if, uh, if it's a white one, it's uh, 15 amp, yellow is 20 amp, orange 30 amp, black 60 amp, and uh, orange uses a, uh, orange is the 30 amp, and it's uh, 
a 10-3, just like we have up there. Hey guys, fix it, John here. Uh, I almost forgot, before you do any work uh, around electricity, make sure you have a nice hot cup of Starbucks. Otherwise, you might electric. Oh yeah, guys, I just wanted to show you my Sawzall. Uh, I learned something today on it that I never knew. I was in a tight spot, and I couldn't get it, couldn't get it. This blade actually worked upside down, and I could get closer into what I was cutting. So I'm gonna go put a long blade in here because I can't reach what I'm doing now. But uh, yeah, just learned that today. We've had this thing forever. It's like the antique of Milwaukee. Here, I'm gonna cut this big old uh, 10 gauge 30 amp uh, cable. So I can put some length in it. If it was on, that would be uh, bright red. Like that one, you see that one? The junction box is up here. I can mount them anywhere in the attic as long as it's accessible, and that's accessible. Hey guys, Fix It John here. There's the one junction box all done. This is my extra piece here so I could get around that uh, ceiling joist right there. And uh, I'm gonna put this one in and show you how I did it. Here. I just wanted to show you what I did with this wiring here before I uh, uh, framed my framed it in for my soffit. See that wire here? Originally, it was running uh, up under this uh, ceiling truss over here, and I cut it in half and I ran it back around that that uh, ceiling truss, and uh, that way I'll be able to frame it frame it in. Uh, all these wires here, I uh, th this is not non-load bearing, none of that. Uh, I notched that out so the wire, so I could go over it with my uh, Dura Rock. What I did, I framed out for the uh, soffit, so I can have something to hook the uh, drywall to. Just uh, three two by fours and uh, blocked it in a little bit there, so I could get a get a little bit more on it. But I bought a uh, DeWalt uh, powder-charged uh, powder charged uh, nailer to put some of these uh, furring strips in, and it sucked. I mean, it, it, it left it out like, it left it out about an inch. And that one was left out, it wouldn't go all the way in. I, I nailed those in, that's why they're in as far as they are, so. So what I'm doing here is, uh, I'm gonna cut out where that laser line is, and uh, uh, if I just go along with the level, I mean, I could probably get it pretty close, but uh, it, it would be out. Hey guys, Fix It John here. We're pulling into uh, Pinellas County Solid Waste Landfill. Uh, this is going to be one of many trips to the landfill for me. As you know, I'm remodeling the house. All right, guys, we're getting ready to pull on a scale here to see what our gross weight is. And if you look up, you can see what our uh, tonnage will be. Here at the top, I've got a load of tile and uh, we're at three, 3.75 ton. And you're gonna take this to the south landfill. All right, been there. And there's your receipt, thank you. Thank you, sir. All right, guys, we're on our way to the South Landfill. All right, guys, there's my load. That's what I have. Let's get rid of it. 
this is where it's going right here. Hey guys, Fix It John here. I, I want to show you what a lot of uh, do-it-yourself home improvement guys uh, leave out. And that are these uh, nail plates. And you want to put a nail plate in uh, to keep other people coming from coming behind you and uh, hanging a picture. I know this is a restroom, but uh, uh, keep somebody from hanging a picture here and drilling through this stud and hitting a uh, hot wire. Uh, this one here uh, really needed one because if it's uh, if the hole is within one and a fourth inch of the edge of the uh, stud, you definitely need a nail plate. Here, uh, if you're wondering why this stud's missing here in the middle of this uh, bathroom area, well, that's because I'm going to build a niche in there, and uh, I'm not using one of those uh, store bought ones. I'm making my own, and it'll be custom made. So. Uh, Let's, uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut some pressure treated board and put it in there. But before I do, I'm gonna curve cut it because as we know, pressure treated wood, it'll have a ten tendency to warp. And uh, I don't want it to warp with the concrete board there and then uh, start busting out tiles, so. John here. Today's bathtub day. We need to uh, line it up and uh, see if the uh, drain and the uh, vent pipe is going to match up. Otherwise, I'll have to get in there and cut the uh, the drain pipe and reset it and the vent pipe. So, fingers crossed. I hope everything matches up. All right, guys, that's what we're going after right there. We want to line that up with that. Uh, uh, with that drain tube and that uh, vent pipe there. Hey guys, uh, Fix It John here. While we're talking about nail plates here, I was noticing this wire here is uh, closer to this uh, wall board than uh, this one here. So I went ahead and cut out a hole so I can uh, install a uh, nail plate there on the other side. I'll show you. All right guys, that's what we're going after right there. We want to line that up with that uh, uh, with that drain tube and that uh, vent pipe there. Dreading right there. The drain not lining up and uh, the vent tube not lining up. But uh, it's not the end of the world. It's just a little sadness for me because I have to do more work and fit and finish and all that but uh, we'll get it in there and might take me a few hours but uh, we'll do all it right, guys uh that origami <laughs> those fittings didn't work i couldn't get it to line up it would have been too tall so i ended up digging it out there and here's all my uh uh dirt made it almost to china and finally stopped but uh I have to go, I had to go way down there. Let me move this rag out of the way so you can see because, uh, so I had to dig all the way down here so I can cut this uh, coupler off and uh, I'll have to clean it up real good and put another coupler on it. Now the sewer pipe is right under here. This is where it's, uh, it's uh, screwed down. I could also just, 
take a pipe wrench and twist that off, but uh, chances are they may have used pipe thread or pipe dope on there, and uh, I'm taking a chance on breaking the sewer line. So I'm not gonna do it that way. I'm gonna cut it right here under this coupler, stick another coupler on it, another pipe on top of that, and then uh, my drain. Uh, this one does, the, the new one will have to come up a little higher and over this way, but, uh, and I'll dry fit it. And, uh, what I'm going to do with this hole is, uh, go down and buy me 10, 20 pounds of play sand, put some, uh, play sand in there. And then, uh, I've got a little thin set. I'll put a, uh, a thin layer of thin set on here. They use this tarry stuff. I don't know what it is. I don't know if plumbers use it or what they do. But uh, if you, anybody, any of you guys know, leave uh, leave a link, leave a comment uh, down below, and uh, tell me what it is. But it's some sort of uh, tarry uh, asphalt substance. But uh, all I'm going to do, and that's probably to keep termites and stuff out. But all I'm going to do is uh, fill it with play sand and. Uh, put maybe about an inch of uh, thin set on it. That way, if anybody has to get back into it, they can just take a hammer and smack that thin set and it'll break right up. When you install this uh, T-fitting, make sure it's sloped down right here. Going down to the drain, don't install it upside down. Otherwise it won't vent properly and it'll gurgle. So I gotta work fast here because uh, this is gonna be the hardest part of the, uh, the scariest part of the job. Because I only have one shot, one shot to do it. Otherwise I'll have to cut it off and redo it again. I work fast here, guys. All right, guys, there we go. That's what it looks like dry fit. This is what we got going on down back here. I still have to glue that and glue that, but I'm gonna mark this so I know exactly where to glue so we get it right. All right, guys, fix it, John. I just wanted to show you here, I've got it all lined up, marked off. Uh, it may be overkill for somebody, but uh, especially for a plumber, <laughs> but I wanna make sure I get it all lined up. I got five, Pipe one, uh, fitting one, fitting two, and fitting three, line one, line two, and so on. So I don't want to mess it up. This guy's all glued up. Just got to throw the uh, rubber uh, bushing in there, washer, whatever you want to call it. No silicone. Uh, they want me to go around the rim of this tub right here uh, with uh, drywall screws and uh, washers to hold the tub down. But uh, I want to step further and I got me uh, stainless steel uh, screws and washers. Uh, only because they'll rust and I don't want drips of rust uh, coming out of my bathtub after I get it installed. So I'll go ahead and tack this in here. Hey guys, fix it down. I just wanted to show you what I got down under here under the bathtub. What I did was uh, I backfilled that hole with uh, play sand and then I topped that with uh, some uh, ex uh, expanding foam. Finished it off with uh, thin set. 
I'm getting ready to uh, put my uh, cement board up. But I'm gonna use this uh, furring strip here as a shim to lay my uh, cement board on. And I'll be covering that screw up by about a quarter of an inch. Uh, you wanna make sure you cover this. I've seen some guys on YouTube bring it to the top of this edge and uh, that's just not good because water will get behind this tub here. So you wanna bring it over that screw and uh, you're still about a half inch uh, above the tub to where it won't wick water up. And then this half inch here will be covered with uh, tile and grout, so. Oh yeah, guys, one thing uh, you wanna make a note of, I'll be using the uh, Durarock screws, uh, corrosion resistant. You want these because they'll rust if you use just regular old dry, drywall screws. Hey guys, I wanna tell you something here. Before you go messing around with any uh, sheetrock or uh, cement board, make sure you have a nice hot cup of Starbucks. I cut my top piece and I just scored that with a razor blade. Uh, but what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna glue this piece down. And I'm gonna use this construction adhesive. And the reason why I'm gluing it down, I'm not gonna use any screws in it, is because I don't want any, uh, uh, if the water uh, finds its way through here, uh, if the water finds its way through the board, it'll get onto the wood and cause it to uh, rot out. Uh, board here is uh, glued, glued down. No nails, no nothing. I mean, if I would uh, try to fasten it to the wall, it would go right through to the bedroom, so. Cement board tape from Durarock. Uh, you don't want to use anything but uh, this stuff for uh, cement board. It's uh, alkaline resistant.
All right, guys, now I'm taping up some of these uh, joints where the cement board is, and uh, after they get all taped up, I'll put uh, thin set in here. Hey guys, Fix It John here. I'm getting ready to put some thin set down. I want to fill in some of these low spots. I'm just going to fill this in with some thin set. Uh, it's more obvious uh, we're going to be using big tiles, so it's more forgiving than a little tile. A little tile you'll see every little wave. Thin set this low spot here because when I come out to here, the uh, low spot's not there anymore. Now this is a thin set I'm using, and it has a uh, it's, uh, polymer and rich uh, thin set. Uh, and that's what you want for uh, tiles and uh, cement board. You want this stuff, uh, the consistency, this uh, ceiling wall texture stuff, the consistency of like pancake batter. Uh, I'm getting ready to apply liquid membrane on here, uh, sealer, but uh, I'd recommend that you knock the dust off this uh, uh, cement board before you go putting any membrane on it. Well, it's a Durarock uh, liquid waterproofing membrane on. It's a generic brand, but it's the same stuff, waterproofing anti-fracture fabric. And it's for like the corners and the cracks and all that. So we're gonna use some of that and uh, this uh, liquid membrane. Got a uh, three quarter inch nap. Just to use a, uh, I think an inch, but that's all I got. So that's what we're gonna use.
Hey guys, Fix It John here. I just got the priming done. I prime. I went ahead and primed this uh, molding here because it's going to need to be primed, otherwise the paint won't stick to it. But I'm worrying a little bit because I got a little paint on the tile there, and I'm afraid the boss will fire me. She sees that. She is one strict uh, boss there. Then I got some paint on the door here. I'm just scared that uh, I was going to patch that with some wood putty. I don't know if I can fix it now. And on her countertop and cabinet. Oh man, I should have taped this place up. All over the floor. It's just all over. But uh, anyway, there's the uh, ceiling. I have that all primed. I'm gonna paint it tomorrow. And oh no, on the medicine cabinet, and I got it on the mirror and everything. And the wood, I didn't even see that. Oh, she's going to fire me for sure if she sees it on that wood. All right, guys, there's my laser line. Uh... My uh, tripod was too tall, so I ended up uh, fastening a hunk of metal to the uh, cement board and uh, put it up there. And uh, I'll run a ledger board all the way around here. Can't see it because I'm in the way, but here, there, and there. After all this tile dries up here, uh, this way it'll keep me level because if the tub is off a little bit, I can always cut this bottom piece. And that's how big a piece we'll have. So let's see if it's, uh, comes to about here. And then over here. Yeah, it, it's just a hair higher. I don't know if you can see that. Right there, the uh, laser line is just a hair higher there than it is at the other end. That's why you run a ledger board. Because this line is straight and then I can come back and chop a small section off this uh, tile and you'll never notice that one tile is shorter than the other. All right guys, I got my ledger board all in and uh, that's what I'm gonna run the tile off of. Like I said, that way I'll be able to trim the tile and. Uh, It'll all look visually uh, level. All right, guys, fix it, John. I'm gonna try to do some tiling here. Don't have a clue what I'm doing, but uh, we're gonna try to get it done. Goes like that. So I'm gonna show you what I do. I just take a wet sponge and uh, get this area wet here. 
Not a lot of vibration on it though, but uh, before you uh, do any cutting, make sure you have a face mask. There's not much uh, dust when you use the water. Eye protection, earmuffs, and for, be sure you have a hot cup of coffee, otherwise you won't be able to get this job completed. So, get all our PPE on, and let's get after it. Okay, I'm Oh, make sure you have a diamond blade too to cut this pile. And I just got the sponge up here so it keeps draining on there. Hey guys, Fix It John. I moved my ledger board, so uh, I only have one piece to put in uh, after I uh, tile all this. And then I'll take that ledger board off and uh, uh, be able to make an accurate cut to where uh, it'll be straight. But I believe it's going to take a whole tile so there won't be any cuts. There will be a gap under there, and I'm not going to worry about the gap because... Uh, I'm going to take some molding and throw around it. Uh, but I was wanting to throw the ledger board at the very bottom. And uh, I couldn't get it down there far enough. But this is what I have left to do. I've got uh, throw two more rows in there. Two rows there. And this bottom row. And then the mosaic, I'm, I'm doing that last. I know a lot of pros will do that first, but uh, I had to make sure this was gonna line up and uh, I wanted to overlap my mosaic here. So, but they usually put the tile in, but I'm going with the mosaic here.
Five Flex Color uh, CQ, and it's a uh, ready mix, already ready to to apply. There it is, guys. You probably missed most of it, but uh, man, that's a shame on that wallpaper. That is pretty stuff. So I'm just going to slide this out the house. Uh, I may cut it in half. 
and uh, try to get rid of it that way. I don't want anybody cutting it. Hey guys, Fix It John here. Uh, I'm securing the drywall with some drywall screws, but you'll want to use a uh, stud finder to make sure you're at a stud. And also you'll want to uh, identify that, uh, say that, that there's one here and one here. You want to identify that, yeah, that is 16 inches on center. Otherwise, if you don't do that, we have a, uh, we have a drain here, a drain here, two inlet pipes on each side. But more importantly, we have a sewer stack vent pipe coming up through here. And we don't want to drill in there. We don't want to mistake uh, a stud for, uh, for a, a sewer vent pipe. Now this won't pick, this is not picking up the sewer vent pipe, but if yours does, you may, you may pick up a sewer vent pipe. But the reason why we're doing this is because we have some loose drywall. Uh, I'm putting uh, a backsplash on the uh, back bathroom and this is the uh, planking I'm using. It's a Pacific Knotty Cedar and uh, yeah it's going in a wet area but it is cedar and we are going to uh, either seal it or uh, paint it. We haven't decided yet but uh, let me show you what I got going on inside. Alright guys this is our backsplash and uh, Believe it or not, I've just got it sitting sitting here. I haven't nailed it down, and uh, I'm hoping my uh, Brad Nailer will nail it without busting through it. Uh, I don't really want to glue it down. So I got my laser on, and that's uh, that's what it looks like right there. We're, we're leveling that corner there, and we're level there all the way just off just a tea tiny bit there, which is okay. I mean, it's laying against the uh, backsplash and looks good. But then when you come down here, you can see how far off that level is off the backsplash and come all the way down here. So we're uh, about a half inch difference there. And I didn't wanna, uh, get it in and then it'd be crooked at the top. That's why I uh, test fitted it because I thought maybe if I started it level, then I could just run a, uh, stick a short piece in there. But you know, the wood's not, uh, it's not square either. So I think I can get away with it. If it was tile, it would really show. And if it was tile, I would use a ledger board all the way around.
Right there, see the gap between the board and the wall? The wall's not perfectly uh, straight across. So uh, if you would shoot it straight in up here at the top, it's going to suck the, uh, it's going to pull the board into the wall and you don't want that. Otherwise you won't be able to slide the other uh, grooved board in there. Screwing that stud is a lot better than screwing that little green anchor there. So let's see if I got it lined up. First time for me. Ooh. Don't have enough room back there to even see it. There's one. There's two, she's in there, both of them. Nice. And that's pretty level, not too bad. All right guys, I'll show you what it looks like. Hey guys, Fix It John here. Uh, we're installing some faucets. I've already got one put in over here. Let me show you what it looks like. It is really a nice faucet. Uh, I went to Lowe's to look at faucets and they were like 160, 170, 80, 90 bucks. And I'm like, I do not want to put in another junk faucet. So we have a connection. This is a uh, quality pro. This is what you would pick up at the plumbing store. Uh, it's a ceramic disc faucet carrying a lifetime warranty. It's all brass, it's ceramic, no plastic. It's a quality, it's something that uh, is not going to go bad in six months. So uh, I think we paid $245, $250 for it. Uh, if you'd walk into a plumbing store, you probably would see this for uh, four or 500 bucks. So uh, we have a connection, we're going to use it. Hey guys, Fix It John here. I just about have this bathroom uh, remodel wrapped up. Uh, I'm nailing the uh, trim on it, the molding. Uh, right here around the tile, I don't have anything to nail to, so I got some uh, adhesive caulk, and I'm hoping I can glue that uh, to the tile, that molding. Uh, it's... Uh, just about all done. The only thing I have to do is uh, put a door on it. I don't know if you remember in the video, I got a little paint on the door. And I just about got fired. So, she wants a new door now, right there. Uh, the only other ugliness that I can see here is this towel rack. I probably wished I would have gotten rid of that. Uh, we could paint this uh, porcelain white. Uh, I don't know how ugly that'll be, but 
Yeah, I probably wish I would have gotten rid of that, but we use that. I could have put another one on. I may uh, take some uh, oil-based primer, prime it, and then put some uh, white on it. So here we go. I'm going to nail this to the wall, The uh, what I can nail, and glue that right there and put something heavy against it. I glue the uh, baseboard onto the tile. So let's see what it does and how it does. I'm gonna start down here on the side. We are changing outdoors. The wife likes these doors here. Uh, well, actually, she likes the ones that square up, but I already started with this in the utility room. So uh, we're just hanging doors. We're not hanging the whole frame today. Uh, All right, guys, there it is, all done. Bathroom's all done. I've been waiting until I put these doors on here. Uh, it had those ugly uh, brown doors on there. You remember, I got paint on them. I almost got fired for it. So yeah, I uh, looks real good in here. Looks a lot better than it did. New cabinets and countertop. shower, bathtub. Everything's working real well. This is uh, the closet. I uh, put in some custom shelving, built-in shelving. Got rid of those wire racks and put some uh, wood, uh, wood shelving in. This is my ceiling. Ripped that, tore that popcorn out. So yeah, that's the look at the uh, that's the look of the uh, new bathroom.
So I hope you guys liked this video. If you did, like and subscribe and give me a thumbs up. Thanks for watching. A whole lot of hard work here.